Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, today is National Black HIV AIDS Day, and 50% of black gay men are likely to become HIV positive, a higher percentage than any other group in America. Now, uh, it's a huge issue that really does not get the level of attention it does across the country, and I doubt very seriously you saw any of these cable news networks and broadcast networks even deal with the issue today being National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Joining us right now, Dr. Cleo Monago. Of course, uh, of course, you know him, uh, being a panelist on the show, and also a behavioral analyst, been very much involved in this whole issue of HIV AIDS and African Americans. He also has developed a successful public outreach campaign to stop the spread of HIV AIDS among African American men. Now, Cleo, I start that point that way by saying by not getting covered because the reality is when you still talk about this issue, it is still done through the prism of how it was set up initially, white gay men. When you look at the resources and how they're spread out across the country, they still are going to largely white gay male organizations. Yes. And in cities across this country, black organizations have been fighting in these cities to get more of those resources. Uh, I remember when, uh, so when we, Greg, when we first met, mm. I told Cleo about a story. There was a sister who worked in the Bush administration who had this, re, this went toe to toe with a group of white gay male organizations out of LA. Cleo was like, how you know about that? I was like. <laughs> I was shocked. <laughs> and, and again, this was a sister, Pat Ware, who they were angry because she was talking about under, this was, and she was there under George W. Bush, mm -hmm. shifting those dollars towards the black community, mm -hmm. especially uh, black same gender loving brothers. And that's a fundamental issue when we talk about this issue of HIV AIDS uh, in African Americans, but especially same gender loving folks. Well, thank you for allowing me to address this issue on National Black HIV AIDS Day. I want to do what I tend to do, which is talk about context. Uh, first of all, what you said is true, that the resources have not been coming to the community, but there has been some resources, resources coming to the community. So the other issue that we have to deal with is not just a lack of resources, but who white people give the resources to. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Are you desperate for a good night's sleep, Scott? Then listen up. <laughs> Studies show lack of sleep causes stress, irritability, weight gain, and even death. But you already know how bad it is when you don't get enough sleep, don't you? And you try sleeping pills, Scott. With the annoying and potentially dangerous side ago. effects. Now, maybe you wasted money on the latest miracle pill, CJ, that promises a good night's sleep. Have any of these worked? If not, we might have a solution. It's convenient, inexpensive, has zero side effects, and it flat out works. So if you want to experience deep, restful sleep starting tonight, Scott, visit www.sleepmusic.com. Now, now, this weird little known trick it's already helping thousands of people around the world experience better sleep, deeper rest, and happier mornings. Erica would love that, Scott. <laughs> and with a full 90-day money-back satisfaction guarantee, what have you got to lose? So visit sleepmusic.com to see how this amazing sleep solution can help you. Use the promo code RADIO to get 10 bucks off. That's www.sleepmusic.com. Use the promo code RADIO to get $10 off. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. The line is that they tend to give it to black identified men who are part of the white gay community, not black folks who are part of the black community. Mm -hmm. So even when these people who are physically black get the funds, it gives the optical impression that black people are being served. These are black people selected by white people who they literally sleep with, which is a whole nother thing. And if you think I'm just being um, exaggerating here, the majority of the same gender loving black people in the media, Don Lemon, Lee Daniels, Wanda Sykes, Jason, whatever his name was, who played basketball, they all have white partners. So even the media only showcases the same gender loving people who have white partners, just like the HIV AIDS field is the same way. They use black people as uh, surrogates and Trojan horses to turn things back around into white power through a black face. Mm. We've seen a lot of that in politics as well. Mm. But what, what I want to mention though, in terms of success, and then I want to talk about the resistance to it, is that I developed a model in the 90s called Critical Thinking and Culture Affirmation. It's a behavioral change model that helps people to replace faulty reasoning with exemplary reasoning, help to increase critical thinking, and to do what I call trance breaking. As I've talked about a lot in this, on your stage here, is that 
a lot of black people are in a post white supremacy trauma trance. We're not fully present because we're confused by a lot of things in the society. If you want to check more about that confusion, listen to Dr. Francis Welsing and, and read anything she's ever written, and she breaks it down quite quickly. And there's also a sister, Leary, who talks about post-traumatic slave syndrome. I call it all a trance. We are not really able to be fully present because we're constantly playing dodgeball <coughs> with our self-esteem because we live in a culture that constantly demonstrates and implies that being black is, is a problem. One of the things that helps to get people to become awakened from the trance and bring them into cognitive clarity and out of emotional disorientation is if you help them to understand the dynamics in this culture that leads to the disorientation. Don't got time to get into all of that, but I'll give you a basic example of one of the things that creates disorientation in black people self-conceptually. Like I've said before in your show, when you watch television and when you watch media, you rarely see black people loving each other. It's always a comedy or it's a special moment. It's not a reliable, ongoing phenomena on the major news stations, excuse me, the major TV stations. Well, that is an example of something that implies that loving black people or being loved as black is in question. So if black people are in question about their worth, when it comes to, for example, HIV and sexual activity, if you're involved in sexual activity and you are considering self-preservation, but your value of being who you are is in question, you might learn to throw away the whole concept of protecting yourself because you're not clear that you're valuable enough to do that. Am I making sense or am mm -hmm. I confusing mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Well, my model helps people to understand that those phenomena exist, how to unlearn and decode the norms in this culture that, that imply that black people have no value and that black men have no value. For example, um, HIV among black women has gone down. I don't know if, you, if any of you have seen the statistics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But black men, ever since <coughs> the late 80s, have been through the roof, and now you're hearing one out of two might, might get HIV in 2019. Mm -hmm. It's still through the roof. Well, for example, in terms of bias in this culture and the anti-black male implications, when this dude wrote this book called The Down Low, right. Oprah brought her, excuse me, brought him on her show and she rarely talked about black issues, but that was one of the rare times that she did. And J.L. Kane implied that black men were not trustworthy. They, the fireman, the, he literally said the fireman, the mailman might be trying to get your woman and might, and might give her HIV. It was crazy. The bottom line is that that show re-stigmatized black men again. And there's never been any clear focus on a national basis to humanize, care for, and focus on black men as being valuable. There's never been a black men's lives or valuable campaign in this country. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is that black men, regardless of the sexuality, because police brutality is feeding into the, the implication of the lack of value as well, the society, I mean, you talked about, I hate to like go too many places, but it's all relevant. We talked about during the elections that black men back off. All this is relevant. This attack on the black psyche, this attack on the black self-concept, the lack of valuing what black men go through. For example, we hear about black girl magic. We hear about the black women who have been politically powered in the Democratic Party. It's almost like black men don't exist. Now it's just time to talk about rape. Now it's just time to talk about what, what Trump did at his, at his, um, his uh, union speech. He only showed black people when he showed felons. Yeah, criminality. He didn't show black people. That whole thing creates a disorientation, a trauma impact, and a question in the subconscious of black people Am I valuable? Mm. So if you want black people who are at high risk, like black men in terms of HIV and AIDS, to reduce their behavior, there has to be a stra strategy, a technique, one that I've developed, that helps them to, to, to decode, unlearn, and recognize in this culture all of the messages that imply that they have a lack of worth. So how have you been able to get that, that program, that initiative, off the ground? Well, I'll try to be brief with this one. Um, I, as I mentioned, I developed the critical thing, the culture affirmation model in the late 90s, because of racism, white supremacy, both in blackface and whiteface, there was resistance to me because you think you're the first one to call me super black. They were calling me that back then. <laughs> and it was something wrong with caring about black people. Mm. You know, just caring about black people means you're militant, you're angry, la, la, la. You can't be just a rational human being who's who concerned based on data and statistics mm. about reversing a problem in your community. But that's how I was seen. And the gay community, as well as the HIV AIDS community, is ran by white folks and the black people who love them. So there was lots of resistance to me. So I, it took me a lot to get this model 
put into the hands of the federal government for testing to check its, its efficacy. To make a long story short, a sister named Dr. Hara, Dr. Nina Harawa, who, who's an epidemiologist in Los Angeles, heard about my model, heard revelations about people being excited about it and men saying it had an impact on them, and came to my agency, the Mosley Center in Los Angeles, and said, can we test it? It, it was tested over a five-year period through very rigorous testing processes that was, that was considered legitimate testing framework by the federal government, and it was proven to be efficacious and that the model worked. And what work means, to be clear, is that it took people from the, from the disorientated non-clarity around reducing their risk to being clear enough to value themselves in their community. Mm -hmm. Because if you're willing to put yourself at risk in your community, there's clearly a lack of value for both. Right. Right. Well, my model, which is a very detailed process, at, in the long run, have to realize, wait a minute, I'm valuable. My community is valuable. I'm not going to put us at risk anymore. I'm not going to put me at risk anymore. So what I think some people had a problem with is that core to black mental health is black mental clarity regarding the elements and impact of white supremacy on the black psyche. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The impact of white supremacy on black people being reliably interested in self-preservation and self-protection. And if you are calling yourself an N-word and you're constantly hearing messages and images and looking at look the media that only makes you a criminal like Trump just did at his uh, union speech, there's, the, and, and one more, and I'm going to end with this, well, I know I'm going on a while, but what I learned through a lot of my research is that when there is a traumatizing situation on TV, like D Dylan Roof murder, et cetera, we don't sit down with our children, and I've said this before, and actually give them a chance to debrief, <clears throat> to say how I felt about that. And so the implication is that we can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like rape. In the family. Which is also why, for me, on national media, they immediately jump to, oh, black people forgiving. Exactly. I'm like, no, hold up. No, I mean, I, I ain't got that yet. Exactly. But, but, it, but that, that was the whole thing right after. They're like, oh, my God, they're just forgiving already. And I'm like, no. Because, see, white folks were not forgiven. Muslims right. left to 9-11. Right. right. And that whole forgiven thing, which is part of the white strategy, is to create disorientation around black worth. So because I gotta, if, if, they're, if we have to forgive them, that means they're still superior. <clears throat> so what do you, so uh, last question, uh, what do you want the audience, what do you want folks to do next? Ooh, a lot. Uh, well, I want the audience... We ain't got a lot of time, but I go know, ahead. I know, <laughs> First, I want the audience to do its own research on CTCA, the Critical Thinking and Culture Affirmation Model. You can go on, you can Google it and, and check out it for yourself. CTCA? CTCA, Critical Thinking and Culture Affirmation. Got it. That's what the model is called. I want black people to understand that HIV and AIDS is still here. Yes. There are still black people dying from HIV and AIDS more than anybody else. They're now comparing the, the um, amount of HIV among black people, black men in particular, to sub-Saharan Africa where there's less resources. As a matter of fact, Uganda is doing better than African Americans when it comes to HIV and AIDS because they have more cultural cohesion than confused African, uh, African American folks. Last thing, um, Dr. Carr mentioned the Haitian issue. I think we know by now that the Haitian blaming of HIV was racist, wrong, Absolutely. and not true, and that white people from Europe, white gay males from Europe, United States, went to Port-au-Prince and bought the bodies of poor people that mm. they made poor mm. and brought HIV there. Mm. When Connie Chung, who was the main person talking about it back in the day, found that out, she didn't recant. She was the main person to say it came from Haiti because she got the script. She never recanted. So all of these... And even the, even the monkey thing got issues, you know, the, the green not monkey the thing. Game. It did not come from a green monkey. No, of course not. So all of these implications that black people are the blame, that black men are the blame, and no intervention by black people. See, black people, you gotta, black people need to tell their children that white supremacy is a social corruption that makes being human a challenge because inhuman people are running things. <laughs> and they need to also understand that it's wrong, not you. See, I, black men would be more involved in self-protection if they were clear that it's not them who's the problem. But white supremacy has a lot of us questioning ourselves, including we should, we should protect ourselves during sexual interaction. And we have to teach our children and each other that we're valuable enough to not get sick, not get HIV, mm. and not put ourselves at risk, and that we need to learn how to decode the norm of white supremacy mm. in the American landscape. All right. Where can people get more information from you? There's a website they can go to? 
You go to the Black Music Exchange National Headquarters Facebook page. That's where most of our information is on. You also can find us on Twitter at BMX National. And you also can find me by just Googling my name. And again, look up CTCA for yourself. It was approved by the federal government as, a, as an efficacious model. But now the CDC has backed off of behavioral models and they're now using drugs, wow. PrEP, to Got be it. specific, as a primary means of preventing HIV, even though everybody can't use PrEP successfully. So behavior is important still, that we change our behavior to reduce our risk and be, and be understood about that we're important enough to be saved from HIV. All right. Dr. Cleo Monago, we appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. rollermartinunfiltered.com. <laughs>